More than 85 million Americans are now fully vaccinated. That's one third of the adult population. But whether you already got your shot or you're still on the fence, you may have questions. Our Dr. Frank George is here tonight to answer more of your questions submitted through clickondetroit.com. Frank? Yeah, Karen, Jason. So Diane has a question I've heard many times. Why is the needle so long? It looks like it would go right through your arm and out the other side. Well, Diane, the needle is long because the vaccine needs to be injected into the muscle and not the fat that's just under your skin. But don't worry, in thinner people, the needle just is not inserted as deeply. Now, here are some more of your questions. Sharon asks, I just heard that the increase in COVID-19 is related to an increase in vaccination. One of my daughters claims that vaccinated people pass the virus on unknowingly. I don't believe this because there isn't a live COVID variant in the vaccines. Sharon, you are correct that there is no way for any of the vaccines to cause someone to become infected with COVID. However, your daughter is not completely incorrect. It is possible, although uncommon, for vaccinated people to become infected and contagious, which is why we still recommend masks and distancing while community transmission is so high. Now, your daughter is not correct about the increase in COVID being from an increase in vaccination. In fact, we have seen a decrease in new infections among the groups that have been most vaccinated. Now, Nick asks, I have already received the Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine. If a booster shot is required at some point in the future, and if I am uncomfortable going with J&J &J again, can I get a booster from Pfizer or Moderna instead? Since there is no booster authorized yet, there is no real answer. However, there are ongoing studies to evaluate the interchangeability of different vaccines. And my prediction is that, if anything, for practical reasons, we will need to be able to mix and match any booster vaccines that may be necessary down the road. So for now, my answer is probably. Now, finally, another viewer asks, have they determined what the women who got blood clots after the J&J &J vaccine had in common? And the answer is no, they haven't. In fact, the advisory committee that's looking at the data is meeting again this Friday, and there might be more information available after that meeting, and we will keep you posted. Back to you.